Okay. Today we start the dynamic aeroelasticity. Essentially, flutter problem. Okay. See, this is a dynamic instability which happens in any elastic body which is in a flow and particularly wings, control surfaces, vertical tail, anything. When you have a lateral force that is like a lift on a vibrating and twisting wing at a particular speed, then it starts getting into a oscillation and the beyond some speed, the oscillation become violent and little structure will break. But below that speed, any disturbance, the structure will oscillate and it will die out. That is the oscillation die out. That means essentially in the flutter, you need to find out what is that particular speed at which the wing will have sustained oscillation and it is a basically our theory is a linear aerodynamic theory please understand because Laplace equation linear equation we have chosen. So, the study is essentially a perturbational stability analysis because it is, it is not does not take into large deformation analysis because your flow is still attached because everything is within the domain of linearity. So, this is a linear you can call it stability analysis. Okay. Now, what really happens in a body which is immersed in the flow where it is vibrating? Because you know that there is an unsteady aerodynamic lift which is acting as an external force and it is exciting the motion. So, there is a motion, there is a load and the load is dependent on the motion. So, this is like a some kind of a closed loop system and essentially it goes to whenever you have a damping in the structure, damping in any system, we know that it damps out the any disturbance will damp out if the energy is dissipated. But suppose at a particular condition the damping is 0, then what will happen is energy is not getting dissipated. So, it will have a sustain. Once the damping becomes negative damping, negative damping in the sense it pumps energy into the system, then it will get into a violent diverging oscillation. Okay. So, you can represent in uh, like if there is a disturbance, if it dies off, okay, this is fine, it does not die out steady and then it goes like this is the diverging. Okay. So, the analysis which we say flutter is this condition because we basically have to find out the speed at which the wing gets into a sinusoidal motion. That means, the speed below that the system is stable, the speed above it system becomes dynamically unstable. But when you have at the flutter, this is a flutter boundary or flutter speed you call it, you have a speed that means the value and the frequency of oscillation. So, that is the flutter frequency. So, you always have there is a omega f, this is the flutter frequency and there is a u f which is a flutter speed. 
you need to determine these two. But what happens at this time is essentially the aerodynamic damping goes to 0 okay. and the system continues to but it is not easy to calculate aerodynamic damping separately and then say oh, what condition goes to 0 because it is a because you understand there are two unknowns one is the flutter frequency another one is the flutter speed and uh, we will directly go for the 2 degree of freedom system you may ask another question can i have a 1 degree of freedom flutter one degree of freedom flutter means I will have only one motion that is only the pitching motion, no up and down motion. Okay. Yes, it is possible, but that can happen only in the turbine bed. There are some conditions. Initially, it was analyzed to understand the physics, what is really going on. Then they identified that look here. If you have a system, because this is a very familiar system for us, okay, is equal to 0, we say that. In this system, if x is equal to some x bar e i omega t, that is oscillating. If you draw the, they call a pacer, the x axis is k x, then your damping term is at 90 degree phase to the displacement and this is 180 degree phase to the displacement or you say spring force okay because any dot if you take i will come i is e power i pi by 2 that means 90 90 you can add now when you have the aerodynamics, again you say that I, I, I know m, but my c matrix is a function of aerodynamics, k matrix is also a function of aerodynamic stiffness can be there, but m also you can have upper and mass terms because which we brought down last time, which is a function of h double dot and alpha double dot, which is like apparent mass terms. That means this is your simple spring mass damper system you have identical, but only thing is you have a CFK which is sitting in your system, but the K is a complex number. Not K, K is the reduced frequency, but CFK is complex number. That is the lift deficiency function is complex. So, it becomes a complex eigenvalue problem. Okay. That means, you have to solve real part separately, imaginary part separately, but here if you look at it, this is the real quantity, this is C i omega x, this is the complex part. This is basically minus m omega square x, okay. My damping must go to 0. If you look at the aeroelastic problem, you will have a spring some k x, you will have again an inertia which is m x double dot, but you will have a some aerodynamic value okay, which will have it can give a spring, it can give a damping, this is due to aerodynamics. Some value, I do not write it here, the, this component is the damping okay and the horizontal component gives you a balance of these two okay now if i want to solve a problem in which imaginary component must go to zero and the real part must be matching the difference of the real that is what really happens but it is the eigenvalue problem in which i have to set imaginary part zero real part zero separately Then the condition under which these two are simultaneously satisfied will give me your omega f and the u f. But <coughs> this is a little complex problem because 
you are you have a theory which says that if my aerofoil is executing sinusoidal motion of this type because we put h is equal to h bar e i omega t alpha equals alpha bar e i omega t that means my aerofoil is oscillating in a sinusoidal motion steady that means my aerodynamic theory is valid only for harmonic motion which means it is valid only at the flutter because flutter i have <laughs> this motion that means my aerodynamic theory is valid only at flutter but i still do not know what is the frequency what is the speed okay so this is a little tricky problem of eigen value my theory is valid only at a flutter boundary flutter point but i don't know what the flutter point is okay so how this whole approach is evolved to solve basically omega f we have we directly go for the 2 degree of freedom problem but only thing is physics point of view you say that hey my damping should go to zero error but i will not i will modify this in a different form my damping is zero that means that is the flutter point from basic physics of spring mass damper system if my damping is zero it will execute harmonic motion in the case of my flutter problem i have aerodynamic damping i can have some structural damping also in the system but put together both of them if you add structural damping then the net must be zero. okay that is how the theory that is the starting point now let us see how the whole first we will write the formulation after that we will go to the approach this is a special technique which you have to know the technique that's all and we will learn the technique so flutter of a simple so okay we will say flutter of a 2d of a 2d this is basically an oscillating aerofoil because we have done this earlier we have derived the equation of motion for this aerodynamic center and you have left and you have a aerodynamic moment okay and your degrees of freedom are two which is this is h and this is alpha okay. these are the h is downward displacement no sub is alpha okay. now we have derived the equation of motion earlier so i will directly go and write that equation this is m h double dot s alpha alpha double dot plus k h 
h equals my lift which is a minus l because lift is upwards ok this equation we have derived earlier because I am not going to again sit and derive then s alpha h double dot plus i alpha alpha double dot plus k alpha alpha equals moment m y m aerodynamic sorry m a c m a c plus lift into because m a c is moment about aerodynamic center lift into this distance that is b by 2 plus b a because earlier we derived the moment about elastic axis only ok. So, that way it is fine. Now, you have the expressions for lift and moment given and that expression I wrote to you which is in symbolic form ok. I am going to write that in symbolic form. Symbolic form how was it written? Because let us first write uh, your lift was written as what was that? Lift was written as phi rho b q omega square minus l h h over b minus l alpha minus half plus a l h alpha ok. This is how we have and you know that l h l alpha I defined earlier ok. Similarly, my uh, aerodynamic moment was written as this entire term I am writing it as m y ok. So, m y was given as y rho b 4 omega square m h minus l h half plus a h over b then plus m alpha minus l alpha plus m h half plus a plus l h half plus a whole square alpha bracket close ok. This is my because this is the reason I just convert h over b alpha h over b alpha rest of them. Now, here I go and first thing I do is I substitute because I said that my air coil is oscillating in a harmonic h is equal to alpha equals alpha bar and then I can write this also k h over m that is basically the mass of the aerofoil. This I am writing it as omega h square and similarly k alpha over i alpha is omega alpha square because this is you may say bending frequency this is torsion frequency ok. Now, you substitute this s alpha you know m b x alpha all those things because the definition remains the same there is no change. So, you go back substitute this here and then put your l on that side m y on this side. Now, you know that in your equation all the terms are functions of either h or alpha ok. There is no other term sitting there it will become a matrix ok with h over b and alpha equal to 
So I will write that part and non-dimensionalize it because there are a lot of non-dimensional things come. So let us take the first equation which will be minus m omega square because m is there I will put b is to h over b because just putting non-dimensional. This equation I am writing it plus here this is s alpha omega square alpha. This term is k is m omega h square. Okay. So, I will write m omega h square h over b. This is equal to my negative of the lift. Okay. So, I will write that as pi rho b cube omega square L h h over b plus L alpha minus half plus A L h alpha. This is my first equation. Okay. Then I go and write my second equation that will be S alpha again minus S alpha omega square B H over B that is this term minus I alpha omega alpha square alpha this is plus I alpha sorry this is I omega alpha omega square alpha. I alpha omega alpha square alpha. Please understand this is omega square alpha, this is omega alpha square alpha. Because this is alpha double dot. Okay. In the first equation will there be B over there and omega is square h by B. Where? Third one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Put a B there. Yeah. There is a B. Okay. Now this is equal to that the entire term that is pi rho b4 omega square m h minus l h half plus a h over b plus m alpha minus l alpha plus m h into half plus a plus l h half plus a whole square alpha bracket closed. Okay. So, this is my entire equation. Okay, these two let me erase this part. Now, what you do is you divide by pi rho b cube omega square first equation, second equation pi rho b 4 omega square. When you divide the first term will become because omega square b, omega square 1 b will go, you will have pi rho b square. Okay. So, you will have minus m over pi okay this is s alpha over pi rho b q alpha this will be again m over pi rho b square omega omega square h over b is equal to L h h over b plus L alpha then half plus a L h alpha. Okay. Similarly, the second equation will become minus s alpha over 
pi rho p cube h over b minus i alpha over pi rho b 4 alpha plus i alpha over pi rho b 4 omega alpha over omega whole square alpha equals you have the rest of the terms mh minus lh a plus a h over b then plus m alpha minus l alpha plus mh a plus a plus lh half plus a whole square okay. let me erase this these equations okay. now you see these are my two equations now I introduce some non-dimensional quantities okay let me write the non-dimensional quantity maybe here mu m over phi so this is mass ratio okay that is mass of the aerofoil divided by this is mass of air basically a cylinder with the b as the radius okay this is mass ratio then you write s alpha over m b because s alpha is what m b x alpha so this is x alpha this is static what is it let us take this term what is that uh, m b is uh, <coughs> you look at that second term this term will become s alpha is what m b x alpha m ok so let us look at that second term only you will find that that will be s alpha over sorry pi rho b cube which is right over okay this is mu this is x alpha <coughs> b and b so that is why we introduce this type of non dimensional quantity ok this is static mass unbalanced ok non dimensional please note this is non dimensional non dimensional with respect to b then r alpha this is square root of i alpha over m b square because i alpha is how we have defined that. m r alpha b whole square ok because if you look back we defined like this m Okay. So, this is again a non dimensional number. So, this is again non dimensional okay. <coughs> radius of gyration. Okay. Then omega h over omega alpha this is 
bending torsion frequency ratio. Then the last is A, which is axis location, basically elastic axis location. From the midpoint, okay. now you, we have five non-dimensional quantities. Because please remember L alpha, L edge, everything is defined. Okay? They are, they are known. Now you go back, write down our, use this non-dimensional thing, put it in a matrix form. The matrix form will look like mu. 1 minus, because what I will do is, this I will change it, omega h over omega alpha, omega alpha over omega, okay, that is how I convert this term, okay. I will have 1 minus omega h over omega alpha whole square into omega alpha over omega whole square plus L h. All right, because I am taking this term to that side. <laughs> so, this will be mu, which over B is constant, that I am taking it as a outside matrix multiplication. Then you will have this minus sign, that is what this term is, okay. Then you will have mu, where is your mu? This is mu, not this term, this term, mu into x alpha. When you take it to the left hand side, that will be plus. So, you will have plus L alpha minus L h into half plus A and I am putting a matrix h over B alpha is 0. Okay. Now, here when I come to this term, First is h over b, this is mu x alpha this term, I will have this term plus m h minus l h half plus a, that is my first term and I have to take all the other terms, this term and this term, this will be mu r alpha square into 1 minus omega alpha by omega whole square, these two, okay. Because omega alpha by omega square is this term, this is mu r alpha square, then the rest of the term plus m alpha minus L alpha plus m h into half plus a plus L h half plus a whole square. That's all. So, now you know this is my full equation. Let me erase this part. Now, this is my actual complex eigenvalue problem because if you, if you want I will write down the, because you know that L h is what? 1 minus 2 i over k C 
of K. Right? And then L alpha <coughs> half minus I o over K 1 plus 2 C of K minus 2 right then your m h is half and m alpha is 3 over 8 minus i over ok please make sure that this is you have checked it or you have not checked it because I would like you to check that ok did you check last because I told you verify that what you what I wrote is right or wrong. So you have to substitute and then get that L H. Now you know this is my equation. This is a complex equation because L H C F K. C F K is a complex number. Okay. Now how will I solve my flutter problem? And you know that damping has to be zero. How do I know what is that thing? It's not easy. Okay, it's a difficult problem. That is why the approach that is adopted is because you know that I have to get what omega. I don't know. That is the plus omega alpha. Please remember, all those quantities are known quantities. Because you know that mass of the airfoil x alpha wherever is the CG location r alpha you will know omega h by omega alpha no, you know a elastic axis location that means these quantities you know if you are given the airfoil section. Now I do not know k because k is omega b by q. This contains two unknowns omega and q. Omega is there. Essentially I need to find out what is omega, what is q which is the flutter frequency and the flutter speed for which the real part and imaginary part everything must be 0. Okay. This becomes the difficult task. Therefore, because if you start with uh, any value of k, because it is you have to get that value of k at which everything is beautifully satisfied, the real part, imaginary part, all are satisfied. Then uh, what was the approach that was adopted is that is why this is a special there are two techniques I will mention one of them first then the second one is fairly simple. This is called the I will erase here okay. called the V G Pg or Ug, any name you can give. Okay. Now, how do we solve this problem? What was done is I'll first describe the approach. Later I'll give some uh, effect of various things. Okay. You now write. equal to okay some okay I'll I'll put it into one plus
what i have done is omega alpha or omega whole square into some quantity this is a complex number 1 plus ig equals capital omega i am saying okay now because why if you want to know a little bit we can go back to the what is that this is like i am adding a fictitious damping okay fictitious damping and i will go replace in my equation wherever omega or alpha over omega square is sitting there i am going to write this omega that is here and here i will write capital omega okay i will write capital omega which means i am introducing two unknowns now one is this another one is this okay because i don't know both of them why i introduce i will come to that because you know that my equation is one where g is zero only when g is zero i get my flutter equation this is the correct equation but i am adding an ig ig is a complex damping okay basically it is a damping which comes as a complex number that's a not complex damping sorry it's a damping i put it as a complex number now you know that if i assume a k please understand because my aerodynamic coefficients are known if i am given the value of k okay k is omega b by u so what i will do is i will go start my equation i assume a value of k say 0.1 0.2 0.3 0.4 something like that then the moment i assume the value of k i know all this lh lr by everything is known now right that means i can substitute everything in this i can value problem except omega alpha over omega plus into 1 plus ig that i don't know okay so what i am going to do is i am going to replace this term as omega and omega right this is an unknown this is an eigen value problem right because i know everything else but only thing is this is a complex eigen value problem please understand i am having a omega square an algebraic equation only thing is the coefficients are all complex number okay here you don't go and do real and imaginary part you just solve the complex eigen value problem directly because you may have say a omega square plus b omega plus some c omega equal 0 right because when i because this is omega square only this into this is the omega square right now a b c are all complex numbers okay you know that omega is also a complex number so i will directly go and solve omega equals put it plus or minus but minus minus b plus or minus root of b square minus 4 ac over so i will have two roots omega 1 omega 2 but they are complex numbers because you just directly substitute the complex number all right i will have two omegas which are complex number now that complex number i am going to write it as
x plus i y first one x 1 y 1 then I can have x 2 y 2 right. <coughs> so, I write x 1 y 1 the second one will be so I can put it as another root will be I am going to call omega 1, omega 2, g 1, g 2. Okay. I know x 1 is what? <coughs> omega 1 is <coughs> omega alpha by root x 1 and g 1 is y 1 over x 1. Similarly, I get omega 2 g 2. So, I will have omega 2 is omega alpha over root x 2 and g 2 becomes y 2 by x 2. Now, I have omega 1 omega 2 g 1 what I do is I go and then plot the values. One is the plot of g. Okay. Basically, that is what is required. Another one is the plot of uh, omega. Okay, I'll just mention that. Okay. Another is the plot of omega over omega alpha that is omega 1 because I am plotting non dimensional ok. All right. Now, the x axis what I keep is what is k? k is omega b by u ok. Now, can I write this one no, uh, ok let me ok let me write this here. What is one no, that is u over b omega hmm? This is what u over b omega alpha. Hmm? This is what? Hmm? And <coughs> what is omega alpha over omega? That is square root of x. So, I will put it square root. No, 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 this, yeah, this is square root of this, right. That means, <coughs> in my x axis, I can plot u by b omega alpha. X axis, I am plotting u by b omega alpha because please remember I know omega alpha, I know b because that is given in the system. U, I have to get it from because you know that what is k, k is, k is what? Omega b by u, ok. That is why I am getting these values from here. I know the value of k, right. I know the value of x for each root. Please remember, because you have to remember, I get two roots, 
x1 and x2. x2 represent omega alpha by omega 2. x1 represent omega alpha by omega 1. That means I can get x1 and x2. Put the value root k. I know my x point. Okay. Y point, I get g. So, what I will do is, I will start up. Usually, you will find the curve will go like this. One curve will go like this, another curve may go like this. Okay. This is torsion, this is bending. Because please note, you are plotting g versus <coughs> which is 1 by k root you are plotting this. Okay. The two values of g you will plot. Similarly, you plot omega by omega alpha again u by b omega alpha. You can plot this will go like this and that may come like this. Okay. And this point where you make the value of g will come to 0. Okay. Even in any one root, please understand, this root will not go to 0. This root, one, the value of g come to 0 represents that this omega, okay, g is 0. That means directly omega alpha by omega. That becomes, that is my eigenvalue of the flutter point. Okay. So, this is my flutter point. Okay. That is why this diagram is called V G diagram. V G or U G. Okay. But you have to plot it, you have to solve the problem, then only you will know. Otherwise, it is not that easy. And this is for 2 degrees of freedom I have shown, but if it is if you take an actual wing, you may have more degrees of freedom, then you plot all the curves. But the point, any one of the curves crosses the 0, because this is G equal to 0 line. Okay. you will find that it hits the flutter point. Okay. Now, when u equal to 0, please understand why I put g 0, because u equal to 0, there is no aerodynamics. Then you set all the aerodynamic 0, this is nothing but a spring mass vibrating system, you will have two values of eigenvalues, which is corresponding to two eigenvalues and g is anyway 0. Okay, that is why it starts from 0. Okay. Please remember that. Now, this is your flutter. And once you know this value, this crossing point, you will immediately know u alpha b omega, that is u f. So, this value you know, you can plot the flutter speed. So, flutter speed you will know and that is the flutter frequency. Okay, whichever that which you get there. Now this is what is done by but usually you will find k reduced frequency decreasing. Okay. Okay. Reduced frequency will decrease. K will decrease. Normally, what you have to do is you plot this diagram for different values of k. Okay. But generally, this is what happens. But sometimes the nature of the curve of g will be a little complicated. Okay. It will not be like a, such a beautiful thing, which I have shown here. Sometimes, 
that is why they say whenever you get g positive okay then you know that that is a plateau that means your system beyond this you are going to your speed is going to or your system is going to diverge below that speed your system is stable but sometimes in certain peculiar cases the curve makes do like this okay in the sense when you are solving the roots it is a little bit tricky problem okay so whether you take this speed or this speed or that speed what will be your plan these are some peculiar cases but normally they go in the so this is your vg analysis of plotter okay. is it clear because this is you have to do one problem and using the unsteady aerodynamic theory and this technique is followed widely in industry because whenever they say vg method it means that this is what they are doing okay maybe for a wing but here we are learning for a 2d section but you can write the wing problem into a bending and torsion single degree of freedom in bending one degree of freedom in torsion you can have two degrees of freedom of the wing you take first two torsion and the bending frequency you can formulate the same problem and you will have a bending torsion plateau problem okay now i'll just briefly give you some uh, effect of various parameters on the uh, clutter just for see one is okay i know there is a clutter okay now how do you avoid you know the speed i get a clutter speed please understand for every wing every lifting surface every country, they calculate clutter speed okay yeah you have to calculate that okay once you know this is my plot of speed prevention is don't go near that speed that's all that's why in uh, flight uh, regulation they will say you must be 1.25 times below your maximum speed will be 1.25 times less than that other one plot speed or divergent speed or control to any one of these okay but control reversal effect will always be there effectiveness of control surface will always be there it will decrease okay so you don't reach that point suppose you say you have designed the wing you find that it's a low i want to do something if you want to modify the design well go and increase your torsional stiffness that means omega alpha make it higher that is one another one is you shift your mass center okay that is you shift your x alpha mass center towards the leading edge please understand you can also apply i told you that lift itself can be written as in the finite state model okay then you have a time domain aerodynamic model that also you can use here okay then you will have in addition to this w1 delta 1 last class i told you you get that x there will be additional state variable and you will have corresponding equation for that okay and then you add those equations also and then solve you understand this is how the flutter problem is solved for a wing okay now we take the next topic which i will give you a very brief uh, introduction <coughs> that's all i will not go into the details of the problem i'll just briefly describe what is the problem what are the key aspects and then i'll give the reference for that so which you can look at it you can learn because it is not complicated the next topic is the panel flutter okay what does it 
mean by panel product? See, till now, we said that uh, if I draw an aeropoil, this is a panel. Okay. The panel does not deform. Or if I have something like this, if I have a panel, the flow is going over it. If it starts deforming like this, that is a card wise deformation, like your fluttering of a flag. What happened? The flag is changing its shape. It's just deforming. The shape itself is changing. Okay. Till now, we said our aerofoil panel, aerofoil retains its shape. Only thing is it can rotate, it can bend, but its surface cannot deform. Now you talk about the fish type of okay. Here we talk about the surface itself deforms. Then what type of problem we will have? This is what is first talked about. Hey, if my surface is also moving, then it is a complicated problem. Okay. That way that problem you do not talk about flow past an aerofoil. What you do is you take a panel, this is the panel and the panel is fixed on a because between two supports, now the panel can deform. If it is a very thin thing, you can have deformation because you know that when wind blows, if you have even if you have a, some other chamois or anything, what it does? It does lateral vibration. Okay. Now those things at subsonic speed, for it happen, it should be very thin, very thin, but for the aerospace application, there is nothing like uh, that thin material, we do not use that. Therefore, it does not happen in subsonic cases. Actually, the phenomena was observed in uh, the aerospace line. I am not talking about the flag fluttering or a uh, shamyana, you put it, then wind blows and then the whole thing can go up and down. It can even have a static divergence type of a problem. Now, the first time the panel flutter was observed in, it was a German V2 rocket. Okay. Okay. Because the panel started vibrating. But it is flow past only one side. Please understand. It is an external flow. Internally, it is a whatever pressure initially you can take it as an atmospheric pressure. It is not like an aerofoil. In the sense the flow is on both sides. So here normally you say what is the, you have to get the pressure difference. Inside pressure you already know, you say that is P infinity. But what is the surface pressure? And this was observed in normal for aeronautical thing, for the thickness of the panel. It happens at uh, supersonic speeds. Okay. That is why they say it is a supersonic panel pressure. So 60s people were solving this problem of panel flutter substantially. But then supersonic speed, so they started using unsteady aerodic theory associated for supersonic. And we found out, you remember we derived piston theory. Okay. You can use piston theory to get the aerodynamic force on the and then solve, but the problem is a panel problem. It is not a wing type of problem. So the whole study went into what kind of boundary condition we can have. Then in a panel, you know that under thermal stress, please understand, when you have constraint like this, if your temperature changes, 
the stresses will get developed, right? Axial stresses because of the end fixity. Then the panel can deform due to thermal loading. And when it deforms, your surface is changing. Now that can also another cause. So your surface deformation thermal. So how the problem was treated is, I will just draw a, a simple diagram and then I will basically give you a few uh, introductory thing. Then we can You take a <coughs> now please understand you have to know panel equations. Okay. Your structure is not a wing, it is a panel. Or you talk about plate problems. Okay. So the problem was x y this is you put a panel which is acted on by and the panel deforms in W direction. You will have pressure okay, everywhere. This Nx, Ny are the compressive stress. You can say due to the surface, a boundary condition. Okay. Now this is the problem. You can now start deriving the equation for a you can have curved panel, okay. you can have flat panel and then the pressure this is the flow which is coming over it and under it okay. because this is completely covered and the dimensions A, B. So the problem that was considered is basically a plate problem. So initially you take my plate is flat, under the action of Nx and Y, what will be my deformation? Because this is like you are, you have to talk about the, for small deformation, the governing equations. I will write the governing equation for this, D 10 to the power 4 W, W is a function of X, Y and time. Please note W is a function of x comma y comma. Okay. This is the plate equation actually. Nx del square W by delta x square. Ny del square W by delta y square. Plus this is the mass density h is the thickness of the plate, okay. del square w by delta t square and if you want to add some structural damping, they will put a gfs also, they will put a gfs delta w by delta t, this is some damping term, okay. this is there is a pressure delta p 
and what is del square sorry this is del power 4 is nothing but del square by delta x square plus del square by delta y square whole square or in other words del 4 w implies del to the 4 w by delta x 4 plus 2 del 4 w by delta x square delta y square plus del 4 w over delta y 4 and then d d is called the flexural rigidity e h cube over 12 into 1 minus nu square nu is the Poisson ratio this is flexural rigidity And then rho m is mass density. Okay. Mass means is that the area. You can say mass per unit thickness. Okay. Because h is the thickness. Mass per unit. You can say unit area. Not unit unit area. That h is the mass of that. Now, this is the plate equation because I am not deriving, I do not know you have done any plate theory or not. Since you have not done plate theory, <laughs> unless you do that plate theory, you will not know. Now, this is what the starting point is. But delta P, that is the pressure differential between inside, outside, you supersonic flow. So, this is where they use piston theory. But again, there were a lot of approximations okay, that was used. I will just briefly give you the kind of approximations which people have used and you will know that that is due to piston theory only. Because piston theory what we had, you remember piston theory? That is a high frequency approximation. Okay. Piston theory says P some 0 plus, this is due to piston theory. Okay which we derived earlier, high frequency of the supersonic. Okay. We had rho A infinity W bar A at x. Okay. Right? W bar A is, or sorry, W bar into if it is oscillating, this is W bar E i omega t, that is all. Okay. But W bar E i omega t you know from the, because W a is what? W bar a E i omega t, which is delta z aeropoil, delta t plus u infinity delta delta x right you got this expression this is see w is the velocity and this is the surface z a is the displacement at that point now in z a you substitute w of the plate deflection at that point okay here that w is plate, here this w is the velocity. So, please understand we should not get a confusion over these two. Okay. Now, this is where they use the piston theory. Then there were a lot of uh, different different approximations. So, I will just give you a couple of uh, uh, equations which people have used and that will just give you some idea what they did was p minus p infinity okay is this is from square root of m square minus 1 into delta w by delta x plus 1 1 over u delta w by delta t okay because you know q is half Row 
or they have different expression also sometimes they have put one more term here for different mark number that was derived from another approximation that is why you will find in the literature on plate theory i'll give just the reference different expressions they are used okay but if you use sometimes people neglect this term also okay because this represents the instantaneous what is this delta w by delta t is the velocity at that point divided by u that is the local angle of attack okay this is local slope so you add both of them okay now this is there were uh, modifications to this type of uh, this expression there were considerable modification there q papers use different now and in the 60s i'll give the reference now there were lot of studies which were uh, performed on this uh, panel flutter uh, problem what is uh, just uh, yeah here i'll give two key references okay then uh, from there you can track down even now some publications in uh, fluids and structures they write about panel flutter for composite uh, materials so this is by dowel dowel and this is theoretical and experimental panel flutter studies in the mark number range 1.0 to 5.0 this is ai a a journal volume 5 no not volume 5 volume 3 volume 3 number 12 december 1965 okay and the page number 2292230 this is one paper and another paper is this by dugunji because there were few people and then similarly don't they all did the, theoretical considerations of panel flutter at high supersonic mark number okay this is also a double journal volume 4 this is uh, july 1966 this page 1257 1266 okay see these two references pretty much they tell you because there is a nothing difficult about the problem because you are not exposed to panel equations okay how they are obtained that thinking is a panel equation under compressive load or you can say on this side and then there is a pressure that pressure expression is given here of course they have different please note here there is another also they will have some factor multiply some m square minus i think i just give that because this is from an approximation that is why you will suddenly find what is this different people are using m square minus 2 over m square minus 
this term A will be sitting here along with P minus P infinity. P infinity is now you know pressure inside is P infinity. The top is so this is the delta P at any point simply substitute this is in terms of W you know W W W. Now, what this equation they have solved for different different A by B and then uh, found out the condition under which it will have plateau ok. These are non dimensionalized and things like that because I know the procedure since you have not done plate problems you know there is no point in going into uh, in depth ok. But this is just to give you an idea that but one of the simplest thing is to avoid panel flutter thickness. So, the thickness is a little bit more than panel flutter, but then earlier it was all metallic structure. Then they said can we eliminate panel flutter with the composite. So, now with the composite structure you can have that is then lot of publications came in that. See one is the mathematical approach to get the plus speed ok. Another one is depending on the choice of material can I postpone my basically the flutter speed if I postpone then it will be fine ok. So, these are studies once the composite structure came then Weiser there is one another paper by Weiser also. As I thought these are old classical 65, 66 paper, but Y C Pung also has done on panel protection. So, in the 60s there are a lot of studies ok. Now, also you will find if you do the Google search you will find panel flutter recently 2002, 4 publications are coming with respect to panel problems ok. And uh, I think with this uh, just a brief note on panel flutter there are other types of uh, flutter problems also ok. I will just one is nonlinear flutter means they call it nonlinear flutter, but that implies it is actually a nonlinear problem all this we have done linear theory ok. Nonlinear flutter you can have a salt flutter stall flutter in the sense your aerofoil goes into stall and then again it comes back get attached ok. So, these are all ok. Then there is a there is one is stall. another one is transonic bus, but even uh, another problem I will tell you. See you will find it is all in the late 90s I would say suddenly people started talking LCO that is limit cycle oscillation. what this is limit cycle oscillation means it happened in some of the I think fighter aircraft something it started vibrating, but it did not flutter in the sense flutter is it has to completely get into a unstable, but it did not become unstable means it will break the amplitude will keep on increasing only, but in the limit cycle oscillation what happened is the amplitude reached the stage and then it started only within it oscillated continuously then what was the problem. So, now people started getting into nonlinear effects because the moment some large amplitude comes the nonlinear effects of the problem comes even in your own this type of uh, what ok. Huh? Can I have a limit cycle? oscillation ok. In the sense it will not go out of bounds, but it will continue to oscillate. That means, you can have nonlinearity from two sources one from the aerodynamics 
another one from structure itself. Structural nonlinearity means I can put this spring K H K alpha, not linear spring, they are nonlinear springs. Okay. Then I can assume some nonlinear, analyze the plotter problem, then show that beyond that peak, well, it does not blow up, but it continues to oscillate. And another one is aerodynamic nonlinearity, you can have solve because if the amplitude goes a little more, then what will happen is you start having some kind of a bounded motion, bounded, but continuously. This will lead to a lot of fatigue life because fatigue damage will uh, completely will be very severe because you you are continuously vibrating. Okay. Now we have done one that is a, one of the PhD students did, but there are lot of studies on this. Now that LCO. Okay. Then stall plot of course helicopter blade we know that it goes into stall and comes out of the stall and things like that. Okay, we use this basically the stall model for this and then we said that there can be a chaotic motion also. Okay. In this sense chaotic motion means there will be all sorts of frequencies coming into the picture. But it is a deterministic problem, please understand it is not a random problem. <laughs> Everything is deterministic, but it is nonlinear problem. So, nonlinear problems have their own uh, what do you call? phenomena like uh, suddenly you start seeing bifurcation in the sense you will expect one type of motion suddenly it can go this way or this way. Okay. Then you can have more frequencies coming into the picture and you can have chaotic motion. Okay. So, these are all in the nonlinear domain, but there it is essentially the research group whatever they are working on they get into that, they solve that problem. Okay. But uh, transonic is a nonlinear problem, that is different. Here stall, you have to have a stall model, okay. because it is a flow is attached, detached, all our theory is attached flows, potential flow, small disturbance, everything. Okay. So, you find the field is also growing in different areas. Now, another one is micro stuff whatever we is doing and there the Reynolds number or whatever is of a different uh, <laughs> zone altogether. Okay. And they have the viscous, the fluid viscosity is more important and uh, they have their own theories developed, but still they use only Ederson theory and other things. Ederson theory is what? It is a potential flow. Okay, there is no viscosity or anything, but they will make statement, but finally use Theodorson theory for and even the uh, yes, yes that is all, they will use that and then solve the problem. 